There's more, a little more. There we go. We are right. um, we are recording. There are seven people here. If anybody else comes in, I'll put place put in the chat that they need to sign in. And okay, okay Susan, it's all yours. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Susan Sawyer, and I'm the Power School Coordinator for the Curry Tech County School System. And today we're going to talk about setting up your grade book and Power Teacher Pro. Um, and then we're also going to talk just a little bit about attendance and how that's going to work with remote learning. Um, Kathy Blades is monitoring the chat box. So if you have a question as I go along, if you want to type something into her, um, she'll let me know and I'll stop and we can either address it then or we'll address it at the end. So I have a PowerPoint to kind of go through with you all because there are two different types of waiting for the grade book. Um, there's category waiting, and then there's also total points waiting. So I want to explain those to you first, and then we're actually going to go into a live grade book within PowerSchool, and we're going to set up the grade book, and I'll show you how all of that works. Um, so again, if you have any questions, if you're a new teacher and you get lost, um, don't panic. Um, I'll be happy to help you after this presentation. Um, I actually have a link that you can fill out a Google form and let me know I need to contact you or I'll give you my contact information and I will be glad to help you any way I can. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. So let's get that going. Yeah. Okay, can you guys see that? Kathy? Not yet. Okay, hang on one second. Let's see what we got going on sometimes, here. Sometimes it's weird. I, I thought it was just me. Let me try that again. Okay, how about now? Nope. Huh. All right, let's see what's going on. Now okay, I think we got that done. Yeah. You're good. Um, okay. okay, can you see the presentation now? Yes, but it's small. So hold on. Let me see if that, that could just be me. Somebody else, okay. unmute yourself, please, and tell you, tell. Susan, if you can see it. We can see it fine, Susan. I can see it. Okay, fine. great. Okay, thank you. So again, today we're going to talk about the Power Teacher Pro gradebook setup. Um, and there's a couple of things that you need to understand about your gradebook and how grading is done. In grades 6 through 12, course sections are tied to the North Carolina 10 point numeric grading scale. So that basically means that an A is a 90 to 100, B 80 to 89, um, goes down to an F 0 to 59. So when you're entering assignment grades, all of the grades should be entered as a numeric grade, unless you're entering a P or an F or an INC for incomplete, which you all at the middle school shouldn't have too much of that. Um, sometimes at the high school we get that because Kids are taking a distance learning class and we may not have received the grades yet or whatever. So again, please make sure that when you're entering your assignment grades that you enter those as a numeric grade and not an alpha grade. Um, also, for those of you who were here last year, um, COVID-19 grading is not an option this year. And that really applied to just those students who were taking uh, classes for high school credit where that really counted because the student could either take a numerical grade or they could take a PC-19 or a WC-19 um, code for that. But none of that grading from the COVID stuff last year is valid for 2021 at this point. Um, so we wouldn't be concerned with any of that. Um, and that last piece down there really doesn't apply to middle school. It just talks about community colleges. And normally, I'll just explain that to you. Normally, we get alpha grades from them. And so in order for everybody to have the same consistency across the state, we change those alpha grades to a what we call a middle of the road numeric grade. So an A would be a 95, a B would be an 85 and so on. 
So the first type of calculation that I want to talk to you about is called total points. And total points is just the student's assignment grades. We add those up and then we would divide them by the number of assignments recorded in the grade book. So for example, um, this student in this example that I've shown, um, they have five separate assignment grades and they added up to be 435. And then you would divide that by five. And so the student's average is 87. That's a pretty easy one to explain to a parent. Every assignment counts the exact same. Uh, again, they're added up, divided by the number of assignments, and that gives you the student's average. So in total points, in middle school, you're going to have Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And for any new teachers out there, that's what we call our nine-week reporting terms. And all of those will actually be categorized as total points. And all of this will make sense once we get into the live gradebook where the total points and term weighting come into play. And then if you have a year-long class, you'll actually have a semester one and a semester two. And what happens with that is Q1 and Q2 make up semester one, Q3 and Q4 make up semester two. Then if you were to have an exam, um, and a lot of students who take um, middle school for high school credit, they may take like a math one exam, um, they would have an exam grade, and that is total points because it's only one assignment, which is the exam grade. All of those get combined together to get what's called our F1 or our student's final grade, and that's categorized as term weighting, regardless of what type of um, grading you're going to do in your grade book. So again, it's just a matter of taking those, adding them up, um, and then putting them all together to create the student's final grade. The second type of weighting that you can have is called category weighting. And that's where assignments are tagged to different categories that you set up in your grade book. And those categories have a certain weight to them, a certain percentage. And all of your categories should total up to be 100%. They can't be less than 100% and they can't be over 100%. So for in this example that I'm showing you, I set up a grade book where I said my classwork would be worth 20%, my tests are 40, quizzes are 10, and my project is 30. And then that's going to total 100%. Now, if once I set up my category weighting, I decide for whatever reason, maybe I'm not going to have a project or just got too late in the nine week grading period and it's too late to start the project, you don't have to worry about going back and deleting that category out of your gradebook. PowerSchool realizes that you're not using that, and it will take that 30% that was actually allotted for a project and evenly distribute those points throughout the other categories that you have. So it does not um, penalize the student, doesn't change the average. It just simply takes that out of the equation and then takes that percentage and, and uses it within the other category. So you don't have to change your grade book or worry about not using um, a particular category if you set one up. So if you're using category weighting, it should be um, used for each reporting term. So you don't want to mix category weighting and total points together. Um, you technically could do category weighting in Q1 and total points in Q2. But that's not recommended. And the main reason is because when you are explaining to a parent, if they question a student's grade, you want to be able to explain to them clearly how you set up your grade book. And if you're using category weights one nine weeks and total points the other, um, that tends to it's just not consistent as far as what you're using in your grade book. So, again, you want to make sure that you're able to explain to your parent and actually manually calculate a grade and a, and a grade uh, average if you have to. Um, so when we're setting up the grade book, we're going to do Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 would be category weighting. And then semesters one and two would be term weighting. The exam, if there is one, would be total points. And then a student's final grade would be term weighting. Now, in some classes, you're not going to have an exam, and that's fine. If you don't have an exam in a class that you're teaching at the end of the year, then PowerSchool is just going to take S1 and S2 and make that 50-50. It's just like a category um, within um, like a Q1 or a Q2 that you don't use. 
Power School understands there's no grade there. You won't have to change anything or alter anything. It will just take semester one and semester two, average the two together, and that's what um, gives the student their final grade. So next we're going to move on to an actual live grade book, but I did want to show you this screen first um, because my grade book is already set up. But when you log into your grade book for the first time and you go to one of your classes, you're going to see this screen that's going to say a grade calculation formula has not been configured for this reporting term. That's fine. That simply is just saying, hey, you haven't set up your grade book. So you don't want to see um, this message in any of the columns for any of your classes in your grade book. So I'm going to get out of this PowerPoint. Yes. Um, we have a question. The question is, okay. I thought total points was that the total possible. Curtis, will you please unmute and explain and ask your question? Thanks. Yeah, I thought total or uh, total points was you have your total possible points that you have for all the assignments, whether they're 10 points or 15 points or 30 points all of those points added up together uh, to make the total possible points. And then your total points earned is what they actually earned out of those 15 points or 30 points or whatever. What I heard you say was, is they take, explain to me is when you said total points is all of those grades that you had up there, were those all out of a hundred points? No, it could be whatever you have. In other words, if you set up an assignment to be four out of four, then PowerSchool is going to understand that, and they're going to take that into consideration when it's actually calculating the grade. So it's not going to add a four as in, like, the number four added into that. Four out of four is actually like saying 100 out of 100 points. So in the background, the calculations that are running for that would actually know that that is four out of four instead of 100 out of 100. But it still takes those assignments and calculates them together to give the student's final grade based on all of the assignments. In other words, it's a straight, it's a straight average, but the way you set up your assignment you have to tell it when you set the assignment up, what are the maximum total points that you can get? And PowerSchool calculates that and, and basically kind of converts that into, is that 100? Is it a 90? Whatever. Um, but it will actually convert that based on how you set up the assignment. As long as you're using numerical, um, you know, grades for that, like a four, you couldn't do an A. You'd have to do a four or 10 out of 10. You don't have to use 100. So, so it like will before. calculate that. Like before, um, when you would look at their grade, they would the kid would freak out because they would see forty percent. Oh my gosh, I got forty percent out of that. Well, you got four out right. of ten right. So that's right. what you're talking about. It would actually it's not actually yes. total points that the grade. It's like your percentage out of those. That's total correct. Points. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? And you might want to also explain that to parents, too, when you're communicating out. If you are going to have assignments that you're not going to do like 100 out of 100 to let them know. So, you know, like he said, a student doesn't see that and go, oh, my gosh, you know, what, what's my grade? Or if they only get four out of four, I don't want a parent to think that, that four, they actually got a four instead of four out of four would be actually 100. So just make sure you're communicating that out if you use something different than 100 percent. Any other questions about that? Okay, so now we're going to move on to a live grade book. And I wanted to start um, when you actually log in Susan, to NCED Cloud. Uh -huh. Susan, my, my mic yes. is being weird. Um, so for the for the teachers who do not have a final exa exam, you don't they don't do anything to E1. Also, That's do we correct. have a final ex exam change the F1 to term weight? Christina, unmute yourself, please, and ask your question. And my, my mic's being really funky, y'all. So I had you're fine. It, it you're better than yesterday. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Christina Riley, will you ask your question, please? She says she doesn't have audio. I'm going to read the question. So okay. for teachers that have a final exam, we don't do anything to E1. And you said that is correct. 
Right. Also, do we, with a final exam, change the F1 to term weighting Q1 40% and Q2 40%? Well, you're going to set that up anyway as 40-40, and it's going to be term weighting regardless for F1. And what's going to happen is if you don't have an E1 grade, which normally would be 20% of the student's final grade, then PowerSchool is going to calculate that as 50-50. You don't have to go in and change that but you'll set up S1 and S2 as 40-40. And then if you did have an exam, the exam would be total points, but that's 20% of the grade. So if you don't have an exam, you'll still set it up as 40-40. And we'll talk about that when we look at the grade book, um, but you don't have to go back in and make any um, changes or, or anything if you don't have an exam, but you still have to set it up regardless because E1 is actually set up for those who have, um, like I said, like uh, kids who are doing middle school for high school credit. We have to have that exam grade. So you have to set it up, but you don't have to utilize it. Any other questions? If anyone asks another question, I got kicked out of the meeting. So when you come okay. back in, you miss the chat. If anyone else had a other, another question, Please unmute right now and ask because I lost the chat. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start out when you log into Rapid Identity and NC Ed Cloud for any new teachers that are out there. Um, once you um, claim your IAM account, you should have a what's called a UID, a user ID number, and you'll also create a password. Um, and then you'll come in and see all of the different applications that you have access to. And so Power Teacher Pro is going to be the little white box with the P in it. So you'll just double click on that and that's going to open up your grade book for you. Hang on a second, because I was in just a second ago and had admin rights. So I've got to fix this. There we go. OK, and so normally when you first log in, of course, this is where you're going to see um, your attendance, your classes. But since school hasn't started and all of that is date driven, I don't have anything to show you right now for attendance. Um, and then over on the left hand side, um, you'll see the different um, things that you can navigate to within your grade book. And then you will have a launch button at the bottom. Don't use that launch button because that is actually tied to an old version of Power Teacher Pro that we used to use that included JavaScript. And we don't use that anymore to launch the grade book. So you'll always want to launch your grade book by clicking on Power Teacher Pro at the top. And so when you open up your grade book, um, and again, I'm reviewing some of this. If there are any new teachers out there who may not be familiar with Power Teacher Pro, so bear with me if you're a seasoned teacher. I just want to make sure that they at least understand what's in their grade book. Um, over on the left hand side, you will see these little, they're called charms. Um, and depending on what you click, it will take you to different areas within your grade book. And we'll talk about some of these in just a few minutes. Um, at the top of the screen, you will click that and you can see a drop down and that should show all of your classes for the current year. You can even go back if you were teaching last year and had things in Power Teacher Pro. Um, once you click your class and then click this little drop down, it will come down and show you all of the previous years. And if you had classes for last year, that will open up and you can actually click on that and it will show you how you had your grade book set up last year. So if you wanted to do the same thing this year that you did last year, but you're not quite sure how you set it up or whether you used category or points, um, this is just a nice reference to go back to a previous year. Um, if I was a teacher and I was teaching the same thing, um, maybe I'm an ELA teacher and I've got five separate classes and I really need a way to determine which class is which, you can actually select a class and then go to settings and then click on um, class description. And I could name this if I wanted to add something to the title or completely change it. I'm just going to put class one as an example in here. And if I save it, you'll notice at the top now that says class one. So you can name those whatever you want. Um, and if you wanted to put some sort of description for your class down here, you could do that. Just be mindful that students and parents will see that in both the student and parent portal. Um, so just you know, be aware of what you're typing in there. If I wanted to come back later and either change it or maybe just take that out, I just come to the same class descriptions page, make my change, click save, and you'll see that it came back to the original title. 
Um, this up here, just so you kind of know what all this means, um, the 1A through E and then the 5A, this is actually a high school grade books and they use this for attendance calculations, but normally this is just like for period one and A through E means Monday through Friday. This is the course title and then the S1 would be semester one. And if you have uh, nine, or like 2021 listed, then that means it's a year long course. So most of you at the middle school are probably going to see 2021 up here where my S1 is. Um, so just so you know that how those classes are labeled. Um, the little create box here, if you click that, that's where you're going to actually create assignments for your classes. And also if you need to create new categories, there are some categories that were created at the district level and some that you may have already had created from previous years that copied over you can go into here and actually create a new category if you need to. Um, there's a little um, question mark here, help button, click on that, it'll open another screen. You can type in help that will uh, maybe answer a question that you might have on Power Teacher Pro. And then over here where you see your name, if you click that, please make sure that when you're logging out of your gradebook that you're actually coming over here and clicking on your name and then clicking sign out. That will close your gradebook. Um, a lot of times it's real easy just to go up here and click the X and think you're closing that out. And it does close it out from your screen, but it doesn't close it out from um, PowerSchool. And so it will continue to run in the background. So then if you were to log back in, sometimes you may get it where it spins or it may tell you that you don't have rights to log in or some other weird message. So just get in the habit of clicking your name and clicking sign out. That's the, the proper way to log in and, or log out of PowerTeacher Pro. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is how to set up a class. So I'm going to go to a year long class since most of you all do have year long classes. And when we're setting up our gradebook, we're going to select a class and then we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to traditional grade calculations. And when we do that, we would come up to a screen, which right now, if you haven't done anything with your gradebook, this message here at the bottom should be listed on all of the different reporting term lines. So I've set up a portion of this gradebook, but I've left Q4 so we can actually walk through how to do that. But let's look at how we set this up. Um, so for this class, I decided I was going to use category weighting. So I'm going to go through and I want to set up each one of my terms. So the easiest way to look at this or to understand how category weighting is for a year long class, just I think of them as buckets. So Q1 and Q2 are the smallest buckets that we have, and that's where our assignments are going to go. And then those little buckets get poured into a medium sized bucket, which is semester one. And then semester one and semester two, which are your two medium buckets, then get poured into F1 with E1. So I hope that kind of helps on a visual person. So anyway, it just makes it easier to understand what's driving the calculations. So in order to set up again my Q1, I'm going to go over to the right and under actions, I'm going to click the pencil. And when I do that, I'm going to go in and set up my category weights. So I would just select my drop down, category weights, and then pick whatever category types I want. So in this class, I've got classwork that I've said is going to be worth 10%. So you'll have to come over here and actually populate that, put 10. That will change the percentage here to the same as your weight. You will have projects for 30, quizzes for 30, tests for 30. Again, that's totally up to you. Just be careful on this. If I have seen grade books where teachers have weighted tests like maybe 50 or 60 percent and they didn't give a lot of other things in the classroom. So that test becomes a large portion of the student's average. So if a student doesn't do well on a test, maybe, and you only had one and that was worth 60% of a grade, of course, that's going to really affect that student's overall average. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're creating assignments and whatever category you're tagging those to. So once you've set those up, you want to make sure that all of your weights in this column total 100%. Again, it can't be over and it can't be under. It needs to total 100%. Then you're going to come down to the bottom right and click the save button. And once you do that, that will change this from like now this has a little message and the total points. It will change it to say category weighting. Then you would come over and do Q2 and you'll see that that mirrored exactly what I did in Q1. I want to be consistent. 
And then for S1, I'm going to do something a little different because S1 is actually a term. It actually, that's kind of like the, the equal sign for the Q1 and the Q2. So semester one consists of Q1 and Q2. So it's going to be term weighting and I want it to calculate Q1 and Q2 as 50% of the student's semester one grade. So again, term weighting for semester one, here's what it's averaging and here are the percentages. And so then I'm going to click save. So then I'm going to go down to Q3, do the same thing that I did before. And now I still need to do Q4. So let's walk through how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put category weighting, classwork, 10%. The little add button up here is where I'm going to add the next category. I'm going to go and change that to category weighting. My projects, I'm going to change that to 30%. I'm going to add another one this time, category weighting again. Quizzes, I'm, I want to make that 30%. I'm going to add one more. Category weighting again. Tests, I'm going to make that 30%. So when I add those up together, 30, 30, and 30 is 90 plus 10. That's 100% of my grade. So I'm going to hit save. And when I do that, now this becomes category weighting. So then I have an E1 here. And again, even if you don't use the exam, you need to set this up in your grade book. So E1 is total points by default, and you're going to keep it that way. You're just going to click on the pencil and you want to make sure that that says total points and 100% and save it. So now, and the reason that that's total points and not category weighting is because we only have one item in there and that's the exam itself. And that's always going to be total points. In other words, there's nothing to calculate it to. There's nothing to compare categories to. It's always going to be one grade and it's total points. So now that we have all of those set up, we've got to determine how the student's final grade is going to be set up. So we're going to want to go to F1. And again, that's term weighting as well. And now we're going to take the, this is to actually calculate the final grade. It's going to take S1, which is 40%, S2, term weighting, 40%, and my exam grade, which here is term weighting. And the reason it's not total points is because I'm not actually doing a calculation within E1. I want the system to take E1 and calculate it as part of the F1 term. So I need to tell it to use term weighting here so that it will calculate as a percentage of the student's final grade. So it's E1 and 20%. And again, 40, 40, and 20 equals 100%. So that's all going to calculate up to the student's final grade. So, so any Susan, questions? Uh -huh. So that means that they can set up S F1. Does that mean they can set up F1 and it will cover all the smaller buckets? That is correct. In other words, F1 is kind of like the biggest bucket you have. So whatever you do in the other buckets, that all gets dumped into F1. And that's what makes the student's final grade. So technically, the student's final grade, though, is only based on, on the medium-sized buckets, if you will. S1, S2, semester, semester one, semester two, and the exam grade. And within the semesters, the Q or the nine weeks grades, they make up the semester grade. So does that make sense? I think so. And, and it would be the same if you averaged out Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, and then added the exam, it would average out the same way as if you did semester one, semester two, and the exam, because the Qs make up the semester. Okay. And it is true that even if they do not have an exam, they still do the 40, 40, 20. That is correct. Yes. Okay. And it, because it doesn't matter because what will happen is it's going to, because E1 is a reporting term, it's going to come in and tell you that your grade book is not finalized. So you need to go in and click on that little pencil and make sure that it's set up for total points and 100%. The exam will never be anything different. It will always be total points, regardless of what kind of weighting that you're using. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you're welcome. Um, so now if I'm just going to switch back to a semester class, because I know some people do have semester classes. Um, this one was set up as category weighting. If I did not want to use category weighting and I wanted to do total points, 
I could just come in and if I want to take all of these out and I wanted to do total points instead, I'd just come here and do total points. And then I would just do how, however I wanted to um, just do that. And click 100 and click save. So now I'm using total points here. And you can still use assignment types and, and the categories there. And that's not the same as category weighting. In other words, you could still have in your classroom, you could have, um, you know, tests, quizzes, whatever. But when you're using total points, it's going to take whatever you set the assignment up as, as the maximum points that they can receive and average it that way. So in other words, it's not actually a category weight. And what I'm setting up here is actually how the term itself calculates. So I'm just going to do this as total points and it's going to be 100% of the student's grade. So I would go through here and just, let me take these out and I'll show you. Oops. Okay, so now I have total points because I'm going to do that for Q1, Q2. We said exam is always total points, but you'll notice that F1 is still term weighting. And that's always going to be the same because term weighting is a combination of everything that I want calculated for that final grade. So when I go over and look at my F1, my Q1 was 40%, my Q2 was 40%, and my exam was 20%. So I want that to be the percentages that calculate the student's final grade. So I'm going to save that. So that will always be term weighting. So your semesters will always be terms and your F1 will always be term. Your exam will be total points. And then your Q is going to be either total points or category weighting, depending on how you set your grade book up. So any questions about the difference between total points and how they calculate or how to set those up in your grade book? Pretty straightforward. You have no questions at this time. Okay. Um, so again, when you go in and in your grade book over here on the left hand side, I'm clicking the A plus grading charm. And if I want to look at a student's average, I'll talk about that for a second. Um, this particular student, I was putting in assignments. So I've got one, how I spent my summer vacation, uh, a chapter one review, which is a quiz. Um, basically, when I key in the assignments, PowerSchool actually has a grading column here, and that is a calculation of the student's grade on the fly. So anytime you update your grade books with additional assignments, this will always change based on what you're adding. Now, if I come over here and for whatever reason I decide that I, the student has a 98, but for whatever reason you need to change that grade, which normally should not happen, but if you need to change that grade, when you click on this final grade box over here, that opens up on the right hand side what's called the score inspector. And you can go in and manually change a student's grade. But when you do, you'll notice this little gray triangle up here in the top left corner. That actually tells the system that it's a manual override. And then the little half circle here with the arrow, that's the recalculate button. If I hit recalculate, it'll go back to the original grade. So I'm going to manually type in 100. And when I click off of that, notice that it still has the 98% here because PowerSchool is saying, hey, you, this is the grade or percentage that was calculated based on these assignments, but you did a manual override. So I'm going to put it here. And then that little arrow will let you know that that, that was a manual override. And so if I save that, that's going to be that student's grade. So then if I went to the next student, whatever. Um, also, if you wanted to put in uh, at the bottom here, there's like um, exempt, incomplete. This is your comment box. If you wanted to type in a comment for the parent to see, you could type that in here based on either the assignment um, and then go down here. If Johnny was late on this assignment or if you want to say, great job, whatever. Anything that you type in the comments box, just be mindful that that shows up in the parent portal. Um, if you wanted to type in a comment and everybody in the class got the same thing and you wanted to tell everybody great job, you could type in great job and then click the fill button and it would populate it down in the comments section. Now, if I type that in, let me do it. Um, it 
you'll see up here the little blue box that's popped up. If I, if I click on that, or that tells me that there's a, um, a comment that's been put in. And again, that would be seen in the parent and student portal. Um, so anything that you type here, they're going to see that. But it lets you know that you've tagged a comment to that. You can also do that when you're doing assignments as well. Um, and again, don't do the PC-19 or the WC-19. You guys should not really be doing audit or incomplete either. Um, but like I said, if you had to do some sort of a manual change, you could do that here um, and it will show that little arrow that it's actually a manual override. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. Um, there's a comment bank. We do have a district comment bank. Some of these have stuff left over from last year, like COVID-19. I need to get in here and clean them up. But you can look through here if there are particular comments that you know that you're going to use, like for doing report cards. You can put a star by those. And if they were down at the bottom, it actually pulls them up to the top once you save this. So you're not having to scroll through and look for that same comment every time that you want to put something on a student's um, report card. They'll, your favorite comments will pop up to the top. Um, the reports, you can do an individual student report, which will give you information about the student. Um, this will usually, if, you if I had more than one student in here, this is like a student roster. You can get student rosters from here. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, demographics, if you need to find out any information about your student, if you click on the demographics, this is all the information that's driven from PowerSchool. Um, we have a lot of folks who are updating stuff right now, um, like addresses and telephone numbers, especially because of remote learning. Um, but this is where all that information is. If you're communicating with parents right now and um, you know they tell you they've got a different telephone number or anything, please make sure that the registration office gets that information because especially if it's like a, a different address or if they let you know that because we actually have to get a proof of residency form from them and verify their information. Um, so if you all by any chance get new information on students, we would appreciate you sending that to us. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as how Power Teacher Pro works. Um, again, you'll just have to get in there and play with it. Um, if you want to create back over here to the right, creating assignments, you would just click create an assignment. And this is where you would actually create your assignments. If there are any new teachers out there that need help doing that, I'd be happy to help you with that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you briefly about, and we will get some additional information about that, is uh, doing attendance. Um, middle schools have been used to doing daily attendance during a particular block of time, but this year, because we're doing remote learning right now, we're actually going to be doing attendance by period. Um, so you will be required to mark your students um, as present. The state has sent down a new present code and it's labeled 1R. Um, that's new. Normally last year, students were present by default. So you didn't have to do anything, but this year when a student is present, you do have to go in and mark them, physically click on the one R to count them as present. Um, I think principals are meeting this morning and they're going to do some finalization on what they're going to send out. So communication will be coming out to you about that, hopefully either later today or tomorrow about what you'll need to do. But um, you will be responsible for doing attendance each day. If a student or a parent, uh, somebody emails you and says that their child is sick and they will not be participating in remote learning, you'd handle that the same way that you normally do. You would put in your absence codes. Um, last year, you had three days to make any changes to attendance and we're opening that up to five days this year. So you'll have a little bit more time because it is a little bit more um, involved as far as how we're taking attendance. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you're keeping that updated weekly. Um, and at least if you can every day, that helps us out tremendously. But we know there are other things going on and sometimes students may not be able to log in until later in the day or, or you have a chance to make contact with them. But again, the communication that will be sent out um, from the central office will be, a, you know, a little bit more detailed and explain that um, so you'll know exactly what to do. So any questions that you all have about PowerSchool or PowerTeacher Pro that I can help you with? You do not have any questions, Susan. You did a good job. That's a good thing. So, um, again, let me go back to. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Curtis raised his okay. hand. Curtis has got okay. a question. You know, Curtis was going to ask a question. <laughs> so, why did they make it not default again? Do we have to literally go back and click every student every time? 
if you want my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it was to hold teachers, and I, and I don't mean this the way it sounds, but for teachers to be accountable for making contact with the students. Um, we've had that question asked multiple times at the state level to coordinators, um, and we've been asked, could we mass update it? And I really think that they did that in order for teachers to have to have some sort of contact with the student on a daily basis. Now, again, we've been given some guidelines and some leeway as to what we can and can't do. Um, and that's what the principals are talking about this morning. So hopefully, like I said, this afternoon or tomorrow, you guys should be getting a little bit more um, detailed information about how that's gonna be handled in our district. But that was, like I said, we've been asked numerous times, could we auto populate that or just push that out? And we are not to push that out. Teachers are supposed to manually go in for each student, each period and put that one R code in. Sorry. It makes our lives not fun too, because <laughs> we have to keep up with all that. Any other questions? I think we're good. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to ask one really quick. You can unrecord or however. Um, I just was wondering, and this might be the question that's answered in the meeting probably this morning from admin, but how are we defining present? Is that going to be present as in they attended the live session or is that present as in they attended the live session or watched the video that's posted and completed the activities for the day? Is that something that admin's going to describe to us later? Yeah. We we're actually talking about that this morning and just kind of some of the options that they have. So that will definitely be communicated out with you in that email that's going to come out, like I said, today or tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. I do have, I have one request. There are 27 people in this um, chat. I don't know if all 27 have signed in because I lost the chat earlier when I got bumped out. So if, I know that a couple of you, I saw them this morning. Um, Please sign in with your name again. There should be, I mean, I saw Sandy Reynolds. She doesn't have to. Yeah. But the I've rest of y'all, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. Kathy, I ran the attendance also. Okay, Oak. Thank you. I, I saw a new teacher asking if they could reach out and, um, you know, touch base with me. Absolutely. New teacher, old teacher, whatever. Um, my extension here is 1050. Um, I will share the PowerPoint out with those of you who have signed up so that you can see that information and kind of reference back to that. In the PowerPoint, I have a link where you can actually get um, the Power Teacher Pro. It's like a little uh, tips and tricks and a help book. Um, and you know, you can definitely print that off. There's also a Google form that's attached. And if you want to fill that out and have me contact you when it's convenient for you, we can definitely do that. Um, but I'm here to help. So if you need to walk through doing your grade book or if you want to set it up and then you want me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to do that. You can shoot me an email. So we have lots of different ways that we can correspond with each other and I would be happy to help you. I will tell you that I would like for you to go ahead and set up your grade books completely before school starts. Um, even if you have semester classes and it's semester one and two, don't do just semester one and then go, oh my gosh, semester two rolls up and you don't have your grade book set up. Take care of that now and get those done. And then that way you don't have to worry about that mid year or, or trying to figure out what you did at the beginning of the school year. So again, if you need help, I'm here to help you. And um, again, my extension is 1050. And my email is ssawyer at currytuck.k12.nc.us. And we will be glad to help you out. Thank you for all you do for our kids. We really appreciate it. Any Thank other questions?